Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today, my ear keeps stopping up, okay? It's so annoying. Anyways, in today's video, I'm gonna do my everyday makeup routine. However, it's different because I feel like a lot of people don't know how to do makeup for their sp like specific face. Um, so I'm gonna teach you guys how to do that. How I learned to do my makeup for my face, not just like some general makeup tips, you know what I mean? But like what's gonna look best on your face your face shape, where your cheekbones are, where you want to bronze, where you want to contour, if you are into that sort of thing, how you want to do your eyebrows, etc. So, um, I've got all my goodies here. Pretty much I'm still using all the same makeup that I talked about in my last video. Um, I'm also in the same setup because, honestly, I freaking hate getting all the crap out that's necessary to film a video. There's my other lip oil. So, for my base, you guys already know, if you've watched any of my videos, I have a very extensive... Skincare, well, it's not extensive anymore. A skincare routine that I do in the mornings that I always do before I put on makeup, even if I don't put on makeup. Um, so I already did that this morning and took a shower. And then I go in with the Dermatology Universal Tinted SPF 46. Well, let's focus. Can you please, for the love of everything, pure and holy, focus. New camera, fired. Fired immediately. Deceased. Okay, there we go. Then also the um, Drunk Elephant bronzy sunshine anti-pollution things we love these if you guys have watched my channel before i almost said show <laughs> if you've watched my show uh if you've watched my channel then you guys know that i love this and am always using it but I, honestly i haven't used it much recently at all um just because it's been so hot in kentucky i'm talking like literally 100 degrees i think it's going to be 105 on our next week but it's like 100 degrees today so that's not my personal journey it's not my personal journey I mix this together. Basically, just for me in particular, I do have oilier skin, especially in the summertime. Well, just in the summertime. Um, so I like to skip as many moisturizing steps as I can and just like, but I still need to wear SPF. So my thing to you is if you want your skin to look really healthy and glowy, I would highly recommend using glowy products and then adding mattification where needed, adding some powder or whatever your heart fancies where needed. I also find that rubbing this kind of stuff in with your hands from the warmth of your hands makes a big difference to make it look more natural and just more blended into the skin. I don't know. I'm not like a big hand rubber kind of girl when it comes to most of my makeup. Like, I just don't like to do it. It's not my personal journey. But I do like to do it whenever it's like something like SPF or, I don't know, a base product like that. Like, I just want it to melt into my skin and look really natural. Not be like, mmm, what's going on? You know? Mmm, what's going on? Okay, also... Let me address this. There are now three lip oils from Fawn Beauty. So in the last video, I talked about the orange one. Um, I talked about this one. I love this. As you can see on the back side, I've used the majority of it already. And this is like my third one. We have the original, the OG Recovering Glow Lip Oil in the shade That's Amazing. It's like a very milky pink color. Looks absolutely stunning. And then we have this one, which is limited edition. It launched yesterday. If you're not signed up for emails, definitely be signed up for emails on the website. Um, it'll be linked down below for you guys. This is the coconut one. And it's like... It smells very similar to the OG one, like the, the pink one over here, but this one has a very bronze like look on the lips. It's gorgeous. And the whole idea behind these was like I have a ton of lip oils and they're like obviously very popular at the moment, but I wanted to create one that was different and I wanted it to be like a lip mask meets a lip oil, you know, so that's what it is. So think like Laneige lip mask meets lip oil and it's everything you ever wanted and more. So after that, I'm going to go in with my concealer. If you have ever watched my show, there I go again. There I go again with this show bullcrap. I've never had a show in my life. Let me know if you want me on one. <laughs> Anyways, um, this has become such a thing to do your concealer like this, and it makes so much sense. You want to highlight the part of your faces. You want to highlight your face in the parts that you want to be shown more, the parts that you want to look broader brought to the surface, more plump, more visible. So under your eyes is definitely a place that you want to like make your eyes pop, right? Also here, we tend to have laugh lines. And by we, I mean me. Don't talk about it. I need Botox. I'm not going to get it. Anyways. So I've been putting it there because uh, I'm aging. So I put a little bit here just to bring some light to that area. So same thing for you. If you have a specific darker part of your face, if you have laugh lines, if you have crow's feet, something like that, you want to bring light to that specific area so that it looks brighter and so it's more flattering on your face. Am I saying you have to do this? No. 
Also, a lot of people nowadays are putting bronzer right here. I don't like that for my face personally because I don't think it gives you like the illuminated, illuminated, the illuminated and lifted look and just like a more youthful appearance. I think it's just kind of like rounds your face out, honestly. So that's not my personal journey. Also, if you pay attention to the way I'm doing my concealer, it's not a very full coverage concealer. A lot of people, you don't need a full coverage concealer. You just need something that's a little bit lighter to brighten up the area. Um, I'm bringing it down and out. So still in a V or a triangle shape. So still down, up and out. Um, like, you know, we used to draw the big triangles under our, under our eyes, but it's a lot less product. So it looks more natural and it's also just more flattering in general. Now I was a big cream bronzer user for a really long time, but because it is summertime, I've been veering away from just like a whole face full of cream products because it's a little bit too hot you know, so like, I'm just not doing it. Um, so I've been using my Dior. You guys know I've talked about this a thousand times. This is the Dior No Powder Powder in the shade 5N. And I take it on my Charlotte Tilbury um, bronzer brush, which I adore. I think it's so good. You don't actually have to have this brush in particular, but just one similar that's kind of, you know, fluffy. What you would think of as like a old school bronzer brush, they're bomb. Also, I always go on my forehead. Whenever you do your bronzer, you want to put your bronzer in places that the sun naturally hits you. So if you go get a sunburn, where does the sun hit you? It hits you on your forehead, hits you on your nose, the upper part of your cheekbones, right? And then sometimes your chin, because those are elevated places on your face. Sometimes around your lips, you'll like get more sun. Um, but especially the areas, if they have more volume. So our cheeks have more volume, our forehead sticks out, our nose sticks out, our lips stick out. You know what I mean? So those are the places you want to add bronzer to. And I just go in very lightly. I mean, really lightly. That's the reason I love this powder is because it's not a bronzer. It just is a powder, but it's a very light powder, so it can be built up easily. It's not going to go on very harsh. And I put my bronzer literally, like as you can see, I go here first and bring it down and up and just kind of blend it out because that's the place that I get um, sunburned. So really, whatever, wherever that is for you, that's what's going to be most flattering on your face. If you're putting bronzer like really, really low, it's going to make your face look lower. It's going to make your face look saggy. It's going to make your face look like it's aging. That's not what we want. We want to snatch the cheekbones right up. People will be like, oh, Lord, is she a fetus? Probably. And I love to work in light layers because it's just a lot easier to build up um, than working with something that's very pigmented. A lot of the times that's why I like creams in the winter when it's not so hot outside because, you know, Creams can be easily built up as well. Then I take my bronzer, put it on my nose. I just go down my, down my nose completely. And then I will take my bronzer again on a fluffy eyeshadow brush, dip in, and just go in my crease. And I'm talking like you just do it lightly, but here's what's going to happen. Whenever you use the same color bronzer all over your face, as well as your eyeshadow color, like in your creases, um, you're going to get... A very monochromatic look and that's flattering for absolutely anybody if you have a bunch of different tones working if you have a really warm bronzer and then you have really cool eyeshadow and then you have a neutral lip there's going to be a lot going on it's not going to be as flattering on any skin tone um, but if you work with all the same shades like this is a very warm bronzer so when i go to my do my blush i'm going to use a really warm blush everything just looks more cohesive and more natural and more flattering overall so i just put that in the creases and sometimes i drag it down my nose like this but the thing is, is because it's such a light powder, you can be messy with it. You don't have to be a professional. You don't have to be even good at makeup to use it. That's why I love it. Because if you're running out the door, it's not like, oh my gosh, I need to bronzer, put bronzer on. Like, give me 20 minutes, guys. It's just quick, easy, out the door, let's go. Um, I do love this blush because it doesn't dry down super dewy. I talked about it in my last video, and I've talked about it in a thousand videos. It's the Stila um, Convertible Color in the shade Camila. It is, for me, a very similar shade to a sunburn. And I just dip it in, or dip my sponge in it, and go right under my eyes and across the bridge of my nose. So exactly where you get a sunburn. Um, you can also go on your forehead because that's going to make everything look more cohesive and more natural as well. You guys know it would not be a video of mine if I did not go over that blush with the Charlotte Tilbury Ecstasy. And I'm going to be using my Morphe A22, Morphe and Ariel A22, and just lightly dust over where I put that blush. And if you go upward, like doing not a ton of blush at one time, but working upward makes your, makes your face look a lot more youthful. You want to pull up. You want to pull everything up. You want to make everything look like it's elongated and lifted 
and stunning, not just boom, right on the cheeks and bronzer down here and contour down here. That's not the goal. That's not the vibe. We want to accentuate everything. Also, I forgot to mention, but whenever you're doing your bronzer, you don't want to be like, because you don't naturally do that. You don't naturally walk around and be like, you know what I mean? You want to do it above that and be able to lift it. So a lot of the times whenever I'm doing a makeup on people, I'll be like, make this face. Because that shows exactly where you need to cut your bronzer or to, to start your bronzer. So if my, you can see my cheekbone right there. You want to lay it literally right on that cheekbone and up. This side's more prominent. I don't know why. I wish it wasn't. But nevertheless, there's that. Then, for your brows, I was doing my friend Abby's brows the other day. Abby, if you're watching this, um, where is it at? I was doing my friend Abby's brows the other day, and it made such a big difference in doing this. Because a lot of people just don't, like, they just don't do their brows um, in a symmetrical way. A lot of the times, especially in, like, Western beauty, we, wait, is this Eastern? Western medicine? Eastern medicine? Okay, anyways, the way that I don't know geography... In our culture, what we find really attractive is, like, asymmetrical people, like, asymmetrical beauty. A lot of the times we'll find somebody like Angelina Jolie, Megan Fox, someone like that, very attractive, Kim Kardashian, because their faces are literally symmetrical. So, what you want to do to appease the eye, because it does make a big difference, I promise, is try to make your face as symmetrical as you possibly can, even if you have a very non-symmetrical or asymmetrical face. You want to make it appear as though it's symmetrical, because it teases the eye. So... What you want to do is, wherever your eye stops, like on the corner, here, you're going to lay it at the, at the bottom of your nose and go up, and that's how long you want to make your tail or your brow. So my eyebrows are actually shaped in a way that I haven't, like, overplucked them or anything ever in my life. So the way that they're shaped is, like, naturally how they should be shaped. But a lot of people deal with overplucking as a teenager, whatever it is, and so it's not the vibe. You know, you get into your... 20s, 30s, 40s, however old you are, and you're like, mm, where do my eyebrows go? So what you want to do is make sure that on both sides, your eyebrows are coming to the exact same point. Also, on the bridge of your nose, this is where your eyebrows should start. After you have like the little bulb on your nose, that's where it should start. So I always take my brow pencil and bring it in like very lightly at the front because I don't like too much color in the front of my brows. But I just bring it in just a little bit because it makes my face look more narrow more symmetrical and it's overall just more flattering then I just go in with my natural brow shape and just fill it in a little bit um, because like I said my natural brow shape is good um, for my face because it's the one that I was literally born with but if you have overplucked your brows you can still see like where your eyebrows should naturally be I hope that makes sense like you know yourself like how they should look they should come down to a point at the end of your nose and at the end of your eye on both sides. That's symmetrical. The arc should be from the bend of your, not the bend, the bulb of your nose through your pupil and up. That's the arch. Um, and then they should come further in. Make sure, I like to do both of my eyebrows at the same time because whatever you're doing to one side, you can just do to the other. And it's going to be easier to follow and like easier to, I don't know, recreate on the other side if you're doing the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to take my brow gel, and I know it's been a thing for like a hot minute to push all your brow hairs up, but I push the ones in the front up because that's the way that my natural eyebrows are, and then I just kind of lay the other ones down, but I want them to stay there because we just put all that work in, so we want them to not be moving around, not be looking wild, come a hard wind, you know. This is a Fawn Beauty brow product that will release eventually. My left eyebrow is by far my favorite. She's just a good brow. My right one, she's got a scar and she struggles. But anyway, push the front up and then these come over. Come over. Okay, now for the lashes and lips, I feel like it's just do whatever you want. That's pretty much just your base routine. You can see that it like just makes your face look a whole lot more youthful and pretty and put together. And it's just like enhancing all of your natural features is basically what it is. So we love that. We love to enhance a natural feature. We don't like to cover them up. You know what I mean? That's not the journey. So all I'm going to do is curl my lashes and put on my mascara. I actually don't even know where my mascara is. I guess it's in here somewhere. And then I'll come back to show you guys the lip combo. But 
really just using a mascara that you feel comfortable with that you have used for a long time if you're going on a first date if you're going to a dinner if you're doing whatever you want to use makeup that like obviously you know that you like and if you don't know what you like watch some of my other videos and look at what's linked down below because these are my all-time all-time favorite products that i love um and i think you guys would love them as well so i'm gonna curl my lashes with these little curlers and probably use the ilia um fullest volume mascara and then i'll show you guys the lip combo i'm back so I put on my mascara. I did use the mascara that I told you guys about, the Ilia. You guys have seen me use this a thousand and ten times. I love it. Um, for the lips today, I don't know. I think I'm going to either use, I might use a mixture of the orange and the coconut. This one's called um, No Ma'am and this one's called I'm Working. No Ma'am. I'm Working. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to use a mixture of both because I don't want fully bronze, but I don't want fully orange either. Let me think. They've literally been just like my absolute go-to's. Also, let me say this. The other day, I limed my eyes with MAC Cork. Um, I've also talked about this a thousand times. But it's a reddy brown pencil. And I lined my eyes like this before I went to the Dibs Beauty event. And my eyes looked so green and pretty. So, I'm going to do that. Also, that's another tip. It's to find colors that um, flatter your eye color. And flatter your skin tone. And use those. Because that's going to be, obviously, the most flattering. But for people with brown eyes, I mean blue, people with green eyes, brown, like ready browns look really pretty. For my lip liner, I'm going to use NYX London. This is $4. It's incredible. We love her. For me personally, I have bigger lips, so I don't struggle with necessarily like overlining them. However, if you are going to overline your lips, I recommend using a shade that's really close to your natural lip color. Otherwise, you are going to be able to tell. Some people care, some people don't. I personally do. Okay, so I just lined the perimeter of my lips with this shade. I love this color. And then I'm going to use, like I said, a mix of No Ma'am and I'm Working. I'm probably going to use I'm Working around this perimeter. It's just such a pretty brownie nude. You know what I mean? Mm, it smells so good. And then the center, I'm going to use No Ma'am because this one's more so clear and I just kind of want to like give it a clear base. And that is all. Set your makeup if you want to. Don't if you don't. Um, but that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe before you leave if you haven't already. Thank you very much. Um, like I said, I hope you learned something. If you did, please let me know. If you did not, don't be rude. But anyways... Um, yes, I hope you guys have a fabulous day and everything I used will be linked down below.